Did you know that herpes can infect the brain? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 53-year-old woman who came into the emergency department after sustaining a grand mal seizure. She stated for the past few days, she hasn't been feeling quite right and felt like she had the flu. She's been having increasing altered mental status and fevers. What we're seeing on the MRI of her brain is this axial T2 hyperintensity all within the temporal lobe. Basically, all of this white stuff is swelling in that portion of the brain. It's also sparing the basal ganglia, which is a classic feature. HSV-1, or the same virus that causes cold sores, can infect your brain and could potentially be deadly. These are the most common symptoms that patients present with and the MRI findings that I showed were pretty classic. Because the temporal lobes are typically involved with HSV, seizures are a very common presentation. Irritation in the temporal lobe can easily trigger seizures. So how do we make the diagnosis? MRI can be helpful, but ultimately we need to obtain spinal fluid from the patient and do a PCR analysis. PCR analysis of the CSF is highly sensitive and specific. Sometimes the EEG is also helpful, but brain biopsy is rarely needed. Then how do we treat it? This patient needs to be admitted to the intensive care unit with very close monitoring of her neurological exam. Management of any elevated intracranial pressure needs to be performed and ultimately she needs antiviral viral treatment, basically medicines to kill the virus. It's the same medicine that we treat other forms of herpes and that medicine is called acyclovir and it's given intravenously. Okay, doctor, you explained how we treat it, but how the heck does herpes get in your brain? One of the theories of how we think this works is through what's called perineural spread. We know that reactivation of cold sores comes because the virus lives in the ganglia of the nerve on your face called the trigeminal nerve. And during periods of stress, the virus can erupt or reactivate, causing cold sores. So if we think that the virus lives in this part of the neuron called the ganglia, it can travel to the face through the trigeminal nerve. And on that same token, it can actually backtrack into your brain. And that's how we think you can get herpes encephalitis. Most cases in adults are from HSV type one, which is the same virus that causes cold sores. In babies, it's typically caused by HSV type two, which is the same virus that causes genital herpes. And that's why we screen pregnant women for herpes, so it doesn't get passed along to the baby during delivery. In our patient, the diagnosis was suspected based on the MRI and acyclovir was started before the PCR test confirmed that that's what it was. After a prolonged ICU stay, she did make a full recovery. I hope you guys learned something this week. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.